You know who it is, you know what it is. Johnny Vino coming to you again. Cantina Social. Today we are talking about something really, really fun in the world of wine. We're going to be talking about the differences between steel tanks and wooden vessels like wooden barrels. So stay with me and let's continue this journey. Johnny Vino, baby. All right, guys. Here we are again talking about uh, a great variety that is so very, very near and dear to my heart. It's kind of one of the reasons why Cantina Social uh, has grown and become a little bit of what it has. Uh, we are talking about Barbera. Barbera and specifically Barbera di Asti. Uh, we have two very, very fine products here, uh, two fine bottles of wine, and we're gonna be kind of talking about the difference between using only steel tanks and then those using a little bit of wood and how that can go on to affect the wine. All right, guys, today we are talking about one of my personal favorite grape varieties, uh, Barbera. Barbera, specifically from Asti. Uh, this was one of the first projects that I had when it came to the world of wine. Uh, that's why I hold it so dearly. But this first bottle that we're gonna be tasting, Alessandro Motta. We're talking about uh, Il Monferrato Astigiano, um, Castel Rochero and a place where Barbera truly finds a unique, unique expression. Um, incredible acidity, incredible fruit, uh, it, but not overly, let's say, jammy. All right, so uh, we're gonna use our good friend Coravin here uh, to do this. Now, the reason I'm using a Coravin, though most people may typically say, why would you use a Coravin for a Barbera di Asti? The reason is because I love this bottle and this bottle means something to me. So I don't want to drink it all right now. I'm going to enjoy a little bit now and then I'm going to be able to put this back in my cellar and enjoy it again a little bit later. So when it comes to the Barbera di Asti from Alessandro Motta, uh, there's a few peculiarities, a few things that make it really, really interesting in my opinion. Um, one of them being the age of the vineyards. We're talking about 1969. So vineyards that have a certain amount of complexity. Um, after the whole hand selection, hand picking, taking it back into the, in the cantina, in the cellar, uh, it goes through a process which is pretty standard, but it only uses steel tanks. Now, there is going to be what in Italian is called il rimontaggio. So basically what they're going to be doing in these steel tanks uh, is taking the juice and kind of pouring it back over uh, the grape skins. While the grapes, while the maturation is still going on, they're really extracting all of the flavors that are possible that they can, um, and that is really just going to enrich the flavor. Now, when it comes to only steel, people use steel often as a way to, uh, it happens with a lot of white wines, to keep a very clean flavor profile when it comes to the wine. Same thing with this wine right here. Uh, it is very, very clean. There's nothing added. You're not gonna get any of that um, vanilla or spice. This right here is pure fruit. We're also talking about a 2015, so there's gonna be a, a slight evolution of this fruit as well. Wow, and right from the nose, you get it. Uh, there is that fruit, but there's this beautiful herbaceous quality about it as well. Not eucalyptus, not mint, but just kind of that, I don't wanna say not fresh cut grass, but that, that springtime feeling. Um, it's, it's beautiful, it's vibrant. And for a 2015, again, with the acidity that it has, it is nowhere near, anywhere near dead. Wow, on the palate, again, still crisp, still lively. That acidity is just, you can feel it on the side of your tongues as it just creates an incredible amount uh, of saliva. And again, the fruit is so rich and perfectly ripe. It's still that kind of crunchy fruit, red fruits. Uh, so we're gonna be talking about cherries, not too sour here. Maybe a little bit of dried strawberry, a little bit of plum. Um, this right here, is what Barbera di Asti is for me. Uh, and again, I don't have a personal relationship with it, so it's a little bit different. Um, before we switch to the next wine, if I could get another glass, please. It's beautiful when you have a team here with Johnny Vino and Cantina Social for the guys to help you out. Obviously, we're not gonna be drinking all of this all by my lonesome a little bit later. 
so again guys Alessandra Motta this was our all steel version of what we were doing um, take this Coravin right here and give it a nice little pull and out we go and here now guys we're gonna be switching over and we're gonna be talking about a Barbera di Asti that uses a barrel so we can already expect some of the qualities um, that we get from barrels in general probably we're probably gonna get a little bit more spice we might get some more vanilla um, and it'll be interesting to see what it does to the fruit so let's go ahead and discover again this is a Barbera di Asti 2017 so the fact that this is still a Barbera di Asti means that it's going to come from the same large region. Now, when we talk about subzones, this is a different area. Uh, Collini Alfieri, um, San Dimiano di Asti. Uh, so it's going to have a little bit different of a terroir, terrain, earth. That uh, So we can expect a little bit different uh, flavor profile. And instead of the other wine, which only used the steel tanks, this one spends six months in wooden barrels and then another six months um, in the bottle. Now, the other thing that's interesting is the malolactic fermentation, which is the part that takes some of that um, kind of aggressive acidity that's in these wines sometimes and kind of tones it down. It's a real easy way of explaining what, what happens. Um, but the malolactic fermentation actually happens inside of the barrel as well. These vineyards are a little bit younger. Uh, they're from 1980, so maybe a little bit less complexity. The other thing that's interesting about Barbera is it is a very lively vineyard. It's a lively vine. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the fields to make sure that they don't have too much fruit and too, too many leaves growing all at the same time. All right, let's see what we got here. Boom, right from the beginning, you can tell that this went through some wood. It's got that vanilla note to it. It's definitely still fruit heavy. You still feel that, but the, the, the classic, uh, let's say the classic um, characteristics of a Barbera di Asti, but it's definitely, it's got a little something extra. Yep, same thing with the mouth. It's a little bit, it's a little bit softer. The other one for me felt a little bit juicier, while this one just just feels softer. And a lot of a lot of that is going to come from what happened in the wood. Interesting fact about Barbera is there is close to no tannins whatsoever, just really high in acidity. So we're not toning down the tannins here. We're just giving another shape to the fruit and the acidity uh, as it develops over time. Um, again. Uh, you got some great rat. You got some great red fruit, um, but a little bit more tobacco, a little bit more th that classic aginess. I feel like that people are looking for in wines. Uh, both of these glasses are are spectacular. Um, both of these glasses are wines that I would want to pair with uh, and put it next to food because of its strong acidity. Um, but I think that you know, depending on what you look for and what you like you might be able to choose between the two. So next time you go out and you're looking for a bottle of wine, maybe a question you can ask to whether it's the sommelier of the restaurant or somebody who is just your server is, did this wine go through wood or only did it only go through steel tanks? That might already give you a clear idea of which wine you wanna choose. So you know who it is, you know what it is. Cantina Social, Johnny Vino, I'm signing off once again, but Make sure you stay tuned because as you can tell, Cantina Social, we are bringing you the very latest and greatest when it comes to wine news and information. And uh, you can be expecting a lot more content like this. All right. Stay tuned. Uh,